It's time for our November plan with me. This month, we're all about the botanicals, what else is new? <laughs> and we're doing a cutaway cover page, a dial-inspired calendar, and lots more. Hi friends, welcome back. My name is Shada, and today we are doing our November plan with me. It's kind of crazy, but 2019 is almost at a close, and Chris and I have been busy cooking up ideas for our 2020 journal videos. 2020 is so close, it's wild. Now, if you're not aware, in December, we put out quite a bit of journal-based content because in December, we'll do our 2020 setup, the 2019 flip through, and the January setup. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of that stuff. Now, some ideas that we've been tossing around for the 2020 journal videos. First of all, I like the idea of doing monthly birth flowers or the monthly flowers. So if you're not familiar, every month has a flower and if the month that you're born in, that's the birth flower. So for September, it's asters. So every month I would incorporate those flowers into the monthly cover page somehow. And the reason I like this idea a lot is that sometimes when you give yourself a specific topic or subject, it actually really helps you to be more creative. Because say for September, I don't just wanna draw asters, I wanna go beyond that. So September is getting into fall, so maybe I would do asters coming out of a pumpkin, a pumpkin bouquet, something like that, you see? So every month would still be different and interesting. Um, so let me know what you think of that idea. I know we've tossed that one around a little in the comments already and it, the response was positive. So comment with your ideas or how you feel about that. And then one other thing that I have been thinking about is that for 2020, I think I would like to do color. <laughs> okay, I said it, it's out there, it is out in the world, yes, um, because I know that a lot of you like color, obviously, and this year I did black and white mainly for 2019, so I think I'd like to challenge myself and work a lot more color into my cover pages especially, so let me know your thoughts on that. Now for November, for this month, we're doing all kinds of fun botanicals, um, a lot of really pretty stuff, so let's just get into it and get started. And just a quick reminder, if you sign up for my Patreon site, you'll be able to print my planner printables. They're part of weekly bonus content that we give to the channel patrons. So head there after today's video. Okay, let's do a quick flip through of my October planner. Of course, I did the falling leaves theme and every month I do a Dutch door or cutaway cover page. And I like it because I can keep my goals and affirmations tucked away underneath and then I have my calendar. And then this larger calendar page is getting a bit stale, I think. So this month we're switching it up. In October, we also had this monthly to-do list. That is a separate video. I will link that below. And I did this cute little birch design. That's part of the October plan with me in case you wanna do it this month. And then I did a really clean and simple and achievable weekly layout because October is so busy for us. And you'll notice I'm shooting this really early because we are actually going to New York at the end of the month. So that's why those aren't filled out, but I will be using that. Um, so I'm going to clip that down and then let's talk about how to create a Dutch door cover page. So I always count in eight squares and draw a line. I, I don't know why I just clipped that. <laughs> and then um, on the page below, you're gonna come in eight squares or any set number and draw the line as well. That's your guide. Now flipping back to our main page, this month I wanna do a botanical theme and I'm gonna use the letter N for November. So what I've done is I've printed the N in a sans serif, so just a no fuss font on a piece of computer paper and I'm going to cut it out, fold along the bottom and then I'm gonna cut along that folded line. Um, then what I'm going to do is align the bottom of the end with the dot grid and then tape this down in my journal. Then we're going to take a piece of transfer paper and slip it underneath that little printout and then we're just going to carefully trace the letter N using a nice sharp pencil. A mechanical pencil is great for this. Now if you don't have access to a printer, you can of course use graph paper and draw a nice straight letter yourself or just use the dot grid in your notebook. This is just kind of a simple hack. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw botanicals all around this letter. 
When you're placing your leaves and flowers, you want to make sure that they butt up right against the letter. So I'll start this flower uh, right in the center. I'm drawing the stamen right against the letter N, and then I've got a sort of a semicircle of petals fanning out behind it. You can also see with the leaves, I'll make sure to start two leaves right on the letter, right on the perimeter of the letter. And it's fine to draw over top of the N if it helps you. Just go very lightly in pencil and you can erase it later. I'll keep most of the flowers and leaves that butt up against the end quite large and uh, that just helps to make sure that the perimeter of the letter is enclosed. And then as I move away from the end, I'll do smaller leaves and little berries. You can see the plants get a little more delicate the farther away from that letter they are. With that done, I'm going to grab my Pigma Micron. I'm using the O3 nib, but I have an O1, a smaller nib handy as well. Um, just use whatever size you're comfortable with. You could go smaller, you could go larger. And I'm going to start going over all of my botanical designs. I should note that it's important to add a little bit of line shading to your leaves, flowers, and berries, especially the ones that are right up against the end because you want to create contrast. So you can fill in the leaves with lines or you can do them completely blacked out. It's totally up to you, but adding that extra line shading really makes a nice contrast between the end, which is just going to be negative space, and the flowers, which of course are much darker. And I'd like to take a second to thank Skillshare for sponsoring our video today. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes in photography, design, watercolor painting, and so much more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their field so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. And Skillshare is also more affordable than most learning platforms out there. An annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. And right now, if you'd like to try two months of Skillshare for free, simply click the link in the video description below. Now I'm not spending any time in this tutorial talking about how I'm drawing these flowers and leaves, and that's because the video would just run too long. But if you're struggling, I just released a video earlier this month all about floral doodles, and I released another one, gosh, maybe at the very end of September, about leaf doodles and botanical drawings. So I will link both of those in the description. Check those out if you're struggling with which flowers and berries to draw. I have tons of content like that, so don't fear. I love the way this cover page is coming together, but I actually wasn't sure what to do for November. It's a bit of an in-between month, but I always say, when in doubt, draw flowers. So that's exactly what we're doing. We did a cover page like this, oh gosh, last year in May, in May of 2018, but we did the whole word May. Um, so this is sort of a variation on that, and I just love the way it's turning out. Now, as this comes to a close, what I'm going to do is take the smaller Pigma Micron and start adding extra line shading. So there's already lots of line shading in here. All the veins on the leaves are there, but this smaller nib just gives me even more control and precision to add more tiny lines and color things in, and you can see the beautiful contrast emerging. I'll uh, get rid of all my pencil lines using a soft gum eraser. I'll link that eraser in the description. And then before we know it, it is time to cut away that cover page. And I just do that using an X-Acto knife and a cutting mat. And uh, I love the way this turned out. I'm going to flip over here to the page below. I've still got my guideline there. And I'm going to place the calendar um, where I can see it. And I just do a, a really small, tiny calendar there and write November above it. I'm using the 01 nib for that. And then below, I always do my goals and affirmations. I just call it goals and focus. And then here, I want to carry my floral theme onto the page below. And so I am going to draw a rose, a wild rose with some rose hips because the rose hips are um, sort of a fall flower or a fall, um, plant around here. And so the wild rose, at least the one we have in Canada, has these sort of five petals. It doesn't look like an English rose at all. And it has lots of tiny little leaves. They're oval shaped and they come to a point. And of course the rose hips are just these berries. So I'm sketching that out in pencil, then going over it in pen. Um, I, I decided to add one more flower here. 
and you can see I always draw a guide first. I'll do my circle where I want the flower to sit, then I add the petals, and then only when I am happy with the drawing do I go over it in pen. And you can see I'm just finishing up my contour drawing here. A contour drawing is a drawing that's just a basic outline. And then when that's done, I'll come back in with that smaller nib, the 01 or even the 005, the really tiny Pigma Micron. And that's what I use to add all these little lines, a little bit of line shading on the petals of the flowers and lots of little lines on the leaves. And it just adds a beautiful contrast to the overall illustration. Okay, this page is complete. Remember, if you want help drawing flowers and leaves, I have tons of videos and I'll link them below. Let's flip over here. And this month, as I said, we're going to do a different type of calendar page. This is going to be a dial calendar and I'm starting with a little rectangle in the center. I've counted out six squares from center on each side and then I've marked a height line and a baseline so I'm giving myself guidelines. Then I'm going to mark four squares for each letter and I've got um, a square in between and I'm just going to write NOV for November. And you can see because I want to do a really basic block letter, I'm just blocking it out um, within pencil and I sort of give myself permission to you know, sketch out these letters so that I'm really happy with the shape of them. I want them to be really straight and simple. This would also be a great time to use a letter stencil if you have one just to help it stay really straight. Um, going over it in pen can be a little nerve wracking, but don't worry if you miss or you mess up, you can always color in the letter completely. I wasn't sure if I was going to color in these letters, so I was like trying to get it really, really straight. And I actually did a pretty good job. And then I decided to color it in anyway. So um, there's lots of options there. And now I have this bold November right in the center of the page. And I'm going to draw this swooping circle of flowers around the November title. So I start with a guideline, a big semicircle, and then I start drawing flowers and they too start with a guide. I'll do a circle or an oval and then I mark center. That's where the stamen will sit. And then by marking center, I know where each petal should be placed. So if I put the center of the flower a little low, that means the petals um, towards the bottom of the page will be a bit shorter and the ones towards the top of the page will be a bit larger and that helps with the foreshortening. So you can see me doing that here. I'm working out a guide for each flower and each petal and so all the flowers look like they're on a slightly different angle. So let's go really slowly here and I'll show you. First we start with a circle. Think about how big you want the flower to be. Then mark your center. And then where you put that center determines how big the petals on each side will be. And you'll see the ones in the front of this flower are a little bit shorter. And that makes it look like the flower is sort of opening up towards us. So when you're thinking about depth, uh, always start with a guide. I think that's the easiest way to be successful doing flowers or drawing flowers on different angles. Where you place that stamen really matters, where you place the center of the flower. And that's all you really need to do is give yourself a guide to begin with. And I talk a lot more about this in my video, 12 Simple Flow Floral Doodles. So watch that because I just can't, this video is already over over 20 minutes long and um, I really do think this is a lesson worth learning and I go much slower in the other video. So I am filling this in, doing lots of simple oval shaped leaves or sort of a pointed oval. We'll get rid of all the pencil and eraser dust. And then once that's done, it really gives me this nice blank contour drawing. And at that point, I can start adding line shading. And because there's no extra pencil on there, I can really decide where do I want the extra lines and I'll begin to place them. And what I wanna do for this design to keep it really clean and simple is I'm only going to add line shading to the flowers. I'm going to leave the leaves, leave the leaves <laughs> completely blank. And so you can see I'm coloring in the stamens in the center of each flower. I'm adding a little bit of line shading to the petals and then that's it. 
It's this really simple botanical design and it's going to make a beautiful calendar, which I'll show you how in a moment. I do want to take a second to say that this design I saw on a beautiful Instagram account called Jan Plans Things. So this is not my design. I think that's important to note. This is something that I thought was beautiful and I wanted to try it. I don't know for sure that it's her design originally, but that's where I saw it. So that's my source. Okay, at this point, you might be able to see how this is coming together as a calendar page. Yes, it's a calendar. I've drawn all these little straight lines going out from the center, from the floral design, like the hands of a clock. At the end of each line, I do a black circle. And then I'm using a white gel pen to place the date within the circle. As usual, I'm using this mainly as my YouTube video calendar. So I'm placing the dates of all the videos coming out that month and their titles. And then I have some family stuff and other important dates on there. But I just think this dial calendar page is a great alternative to the stiff monthly calendar that we always do. And another quick thank you to Jan Plans Things on Instagram for the inspiration. Be sure to give her a follow. Okay, let's flip over here. And the last thing I wanna do this month is a new weekly layout. And this layout is something that I cooked up um, because I love drawing flowers and leaves. So what I wanna do is divide each page into uh, three sections. So I'm doing these little lines and the lines take up seven squares each. And then I'm going to draw a little circle on each line and write the day of the week underneath. The lines will not stay there. They're just uh, giving me a guide so I know how much space each day of the week takes up. And then above each circle, I'm just going to do a little floral or leafy doodle. I love this one with the little semicircles that you turn into little sort of half cup flowers. And uh, once I'm done my pencil guide, I'll go over everything in pen. I'm using the O3 Pigma Micron here and I'm doing my little floral doodles. I'm using a simple cursive for the days of the week title. And then I'm doing my best to go around those circles and keep them all pretty much the same shape. This would be a good time to use a circle uh, ruler with those circle cutouts if you have one. I need to get one of those. I need more stencils in my life. I'm using a brush pen to go uh, to fill in those circles just because it takes forever with a Pigma Micron and it can kind of ruin your nibs. So don't be afraid to use a brush pen. And um, yeah, I'm just having fun doing some really simple little doodles. I think it gives a nice marker to each day of the week. Of course, since there's an odd number of days, I always do the weekend as one day. My to-do list tend to be a lot smaller for the weekend anyway, so that usually works out. And um, I'll wait for those to dry, but I will fill in the, the date with the white gel pen. We'll place another simple calendar at the bottom of the page. I'm going to mark off a rectangle, I'm just doing my very perfectly imperfect hand-drawn border, and that'll be a little area for notes. Now, when you do that hand-drawn border, if you really mess it up, a double line is a way to save it. It always looks good when you do the double line and it won't look as wonky as a one single line that's crooked. Now speaking of a double line, that also works really well when you're doing a simple print. And I'm writing notes here. You know, you draw it the letter once and it just looks so thin and crooked. You do a double line and it really helps to give the letter a little weight and bulk and it looks so polished. To finish this weekly layout, I'm going to trace a circle, washi tape, uh, they make great circle tracers because you always have different sizes of tape handy. And I'm going to do some cute little floral doodles just along the bottom part of this circle. I'm drawing the leaves going outside of the circle and you'll see why in a moment. And once I'm happy with my illustration, I'll go over it in pen. So always do it in pencil first, make sure you're happy with it. Those leaves are emerging from the circle. So they're breaking the border of that circle trace that we first laid down. And then I am going to fill this circle in. Everything that is not covered by flowers and leaves is getting colored in with a black brush pen. I'm gonna go very carefully. I do the edge with a Pigma Micron with a smaller nib, but everything else I do with a larger brush. 
And then I'll add some line shading to give these flowers a little extra weight and oomph and to add detail and uh, contrast. So I'm filling in the stamen, adding a bit of line shading on the petals. Just follow the direction that the petal goes when you do your line shading. And then adding some extra leaves coming out from that circular area. And I think that looks so pretty and the contrast just looks awesome. Next, I'll take my white gel pen and I'll write November as carefully as I can. It's hard to lay down a guide when you're doing white on black, um, but I think I did okay there. And then of course, I'll add the days of the week to my layout. So this is my layout for the first week of November. It's a little more complex than what I've done in October. And of course, you don't have to add that black circle. That can be a little time consuming. But I'm very happy with this botanical theme. I love the Dutch door. I'm not sure if we'll continue that in 2020. So I'm really enjoying them for the last months of 2019. Of course, I have my goals and affirmations tucked away underneath just for me to see. And then I have that little calendar there as well. This month we did a dial calendar page. I'd love to know in the comments what you thought of that. Is that useful? Is that too time consuming to create? Is it weird? Let me know what you think. And then my weekly layout um, with just the simple little botanical doodles and lots of space for notes. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring our video today. I want to take a second to mention a few classes that I think you might find interesting, at least I did. The first one is this introduction to botanical cyanotypes or sun prints. I mean, this is just the stuff that I love, love, love. Anything that has a bit of um, a vintage flair, anything that's botanical and crafty, I find so um, wonderful and just such a fun thing to do on a Saturday afternoon. So this is one that you might want to give a watch if you've been drying flowers over the summer like me. And next it's um, this watercolor course, which I think I've pointed out before. This is all about the techniques. So sometimes we don't get into this stuff on the channel. Things like creating blooms, gradient washes, fixing mistakes. So she really takes you through all of that. And I noticed when I looked through the class projects that a lot of them looked really impressive. And these are a lot of beginner works. So. Um, um, this is the type of stuff that you can find on Skillshare. Be sure to click the link in the video description if you want to try two months free. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I will see you soon with a new video.